Okay, shall we continue with the fun? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is really only practice the stuff uh, that we have done yesterday and in the, in the previous session. Yeah? So I'm not going to do anything dramatically new. There might be a few tricks or something like that. Uh, but it's just for you to really get to practice, understand the questions, actually, what I'm asking, and also uh, learn to be sort of a little bit street savvy when it comes to different units and things like that. Yeah? Are you happy with that? And that is supposed to be highly interactive, so I want you to actually do the stuff um, and not just me um, talking at you all the time. So here's the first question. How many moles are in 50 gram glucose and the molecular mass is 180 gram per mole? Show each other, discuss with each other, calculate. You got it, what the question is asking you? Yeah, how many moles are there? <coughs> Was that a hand up? No, no, no. Oh. All right. <coughs> can you actually see it from that angle? Yes, you can. Yeah? Okay, good. It's okay. Okay. I mean, my eyesight is so bad. Did you get that result? Yeah, 5 over 18. I don't know what this is in decimals. Are you happy with that? With that kind of calculation? Yeah? Uh -huh. Because we are looking for a mole. We've got the mole here. Although we have it the other way around, so we have to just simply say mole per 180 grams. That is what I've written here. The mole is good. The grams need to cancel out. We multiply it by five gram, 50 grams. Grams are gone. And we have 5 over 18 mole. Very easy. OK. We have. Oh, shall we do something really nasty? Ha, ha, ha. <coughs> How many moles of glucose? 180 gram per mole. are in 0 0.1 liter of a one molar solution. Try it again. Try it 
try it again yourself. Talk to each other. If you're sitting on your own, you obviously have to talk to yourself, but uh, you know, sometimes this is not a bad thing. No? You got the question? So how many moles are there in this solution? Okay, so what are we looking for? What's the unit that we are looking for? <coughs> Mole. <coughs> Do we have mole anywhere? Where? One molar. One molar. Do we have mole somewhere else? <coughs> and the molecular mass. Oh, bum. Which one shall we take? Shall we take just, let's pick the molecular mass, OK? Let's see what happens if we do that. So we would write that as <laughs> one mole per 180 grams, yeah? Mole is in the right position. That's great. Now we want to get rid of the grams. Do we have grams anywhere? Ah. Bugger it. There's no grams. So obviously we picked the wrong one. Eh. Let's try the other one. Mole. And the suggestion was we have another mole in there. So we have in here one mole per <coughs> liter. Yeah, that's what the molar is. So the mole is again in the right place. Now we need to get rid of the liter. Do we have liter anywhere? Ah, times 0 0.1 liter. Liter cancels out. And we have 0 0.1 mole. What I've done here, because I'm a really, according to my daughter, I'm a mean pig. Yeah, this is what 12-year-olds what tell you. You, you, you wonder where parenting went wrong. Because I'm a mean pig, I gave you information overkill. Because I gave you this molecular mass here, which in this case is totally useless for you. The important point is, that sometimes you don't know which information is useful. That's why I do that. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah? Here's another one. One of my favorites. <coughs> what is the concentration <coughs> uh, 
of <coughs> 10 gram glucose in 500 milliliter molecular mass of glucose is 180 thank you gram per mole what is the concentration of 10 gram glucose in 500 milliliter You can do that even without a calculator. <coughs> Alexander? Bus. What's your name? Bus. Bus. <coughs> what is the concentration? Okay, what is concentration? Um, I know I should not tell this, uh, I should tell any, any sexist or racist jokes, but there was this dumb person standing in the supermarket looking at the cartons of orange juice, staring at them. Why? It says concentrate. Exactly. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> so what is concentration? Vas already uh, said it, but luckily not loud enough. Concentration is <coughs> amount per volume. What is our amount here? <coughs> what, 10? <coughs> 10 gram, yes. Thank God for that. Not 10 turkey drumsticks. What's the volume? 500? Thank you. So, a valid concentration would be 10 gram per 500 milliliter. Or, if you really want, we can write this as oops, 2 gram per 100 milliliter. I just divide both parts of the fraction by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 500 divided by 5 is 100. So, two grams per hundred is two percent. Two percent, and because we have weight and volume, we have to write it as weight per volume. <coughs> yeah? So, these are all perfectly <coughs> acceptable. Concentrations. That was easy. With a slight exception. <coughs> what?
What is the molar concentration <coughs> of this beast? Ah! Now it's not that easy, is it? <laughs> yes! Got him. Okay, so how can we solve that? How can we solve that? <coughs> First of all, what have we done here? We've helped ourselves already a little bit because we already know that our solution is 2 grams per 100 milliliter. How many grams per liter is it? How many grams per liter? 20. So that is exactly the same <laughs> as 20 gram per liter. Let's see, what do we actually want? What is the unit that we want? Mole divided by liter. Loud? Mole divided by liter. Mole divided by liter. Let's write that down. Let's see whether, whether our, our wonder weapon, dimensional <laughs> analysis, can help us here. We want mole per liter. Do we have mole anywhere? We have 100, and you're absolutely right, we have 180 gram per mole. So let's not worry too much about the liter in this place, <coughs> in the first place. Let's just go for the mole. Let's write down one mole per 180 gram. Yeah, so the mole is in the right place. We have to get rid of the grams. Do we have grams anywhere? Where's the grams? The grams is what we just did, 20 grams per liter times 20 grams per liter. Now, what happens to the grams? Ah, grams cancel out. What's the unit that's left? Loud? Moles per liter. Hey, what do we want? Yee This is exactly what we want, isn't it? So we can stop. And we can say, for our molar concentration, <laughs> it is 20 mole divided by 180 liter. Two divided by eighteen, one point zero point okay equals zero point one one mole per liter. Did I do it right? Yeah. And this is also a perfectly valid concentration. Does that make sense? Again, <coughs> all hail dimensional analysis. When I said this was my favorite, favorite question, I lied a little bit. Here's my favorite question. <coughs> What is the concentration of 
of water. <coughs> what is the concentration of water? <coughs> Sorry? You know that. What is the concentration of water? <coughs> Sorry? Oh, I think they're downstairs. What's the concentration of water? What a bizarre question, isn't it? How weird. OK. What are we looking for? <coughs> concentration. What's concentration? <coughs> In this case, let's go for mole per liter, yeah? Mole per liter. <coughs> Do we have mole anywhere? Actually, we don't have any information, right? Well, we can very easily figure out what is the molecular mass of water. Water is H2O. So that would be 18 molecular mass. 18 gram per mole, right? <coughs> How much does actually one liter weigh? Loud? One kilogram, so one liter, or shall I say one kilogram per liter. I can write this as a thousand gram per <coughs> liter. That's the weight of pure water. So can we do something with that? Do we have mole anywhere? <coughs> yes, we have one mole per 18 gram. That's this part here. Mole is in the right place. <coughs> so we don't have to worry about it. Well, we need to worry about the grams. Do we have grams anywhere that we can cancel out? Yeah? So we have the grams here and 1,000 grams per liter times 1,000 gram per liter. What happens to the gram? Grams cancel out. What's our unit that we have left? Mole per liter. What is the unit that we want? Mole per liter. Hey, life is good. So we have 1,000 divided by 18 mole per liter. And that gives us a concentration of 55.56 mole per liter <coughs> or 55.56 molar. The concentration of pure water is 55.56 molar. I gave this question to my PhD student and she was totally floored. She said, what the heck do you mean? What's the concentration of water? Water doesn't have a concentration. Yes, water has a concentration. 
uh, and then she started palpitating and uh, um, hyperventilating. And I showed her, and she said, oh, that's unfair. How is that unfair? It's a, you know, concentration. Are you ready for another one? <coughs> we have... <coughs> a uh, 1% weight per volume solution of a protein, let's call it bovine serum albumin, BSA. And BSA is a very common protein, actually. BSA <laughs> has a molecular mass of 66,000 gram per mole. Bless you. When we talk about proteins or very large molecules, people, that should, that should be a zero, by the way, People very often don't talk about molecular mass per se as gram per mole. This is very often abbreviated as 66 kilo Dalton. Or just simply 66 kDA. It means exactly the same thing. So I just want to show you that you're not totally flummoxed. So, we have 1% weight per volume of BSA. And I want to know what is the molar concentration. How can we do that? Do you, want to, do you want to give it a go yourself in the first place? See if you can, if you sort of can solve this detective thing. Dalton. Dalton. Potentially. I don't know. I haven't done a calculation. <laughs> I just think of things. Shall we do it together? <coughs> what are we looking for? What's the, what's the unit that we are looking for? Mole per liter. You are absolutely right. Mole per liter. That's our concentration. Do we have mole anywhere? Yeah? Lisa says where? In the 66,000, don't we? So we have one mole <coughs> divided by 66,000 gram. Yeah? 
So mole is in the right place. Lovely. So we need to get rid of the gram. Do we have grams anywhere? Yeah? Where? In the, sorry? In the concentration, in the 1%, don't we? Aha. What does this 1% actually say? One gram per 100 milliliter, exactly. Allowed? Which is 10 grams per liter. Because we want the liters, don't we? So it's 10 grams per liter. And that's really all we need, because in order to get rid of the grams, we just do 10 grams per liter. What happens to the grams? Cancels out. Chuk, chuk. And we have 10 over 66,000 mole per liter. <coughs> and the rest that is something for the, you know, the mathematical infantry. I don't have a calculator here. Do you get the gist of it? Yeah? Dimensional analysis is your best friend. Shall we do a little bit with the, with the dilutions? Because that could be quite interesting as well. I have... If, if you want to, if people want to leave at that point, please do feel free at any time, yeah? Sort of a little break. <coughs> actually, actually. Can you all stand up, please, for a moment? Can you all turn round? <coughs> and round and round and round. Okay, sit down again. That was just to, to get the brain and, and, and the blood flow uh, sorted again, yeah? So that you don't fall completely asleep. I have a stock solution of 125 millimolar. And I want to make a working solution. Of 20 milliliter. And five millimolar. <coughs> How much of the stock is required? How much of the stock is required for that? <coughs> Shall we do it together quickly? And then I give you another one where you can try it yourself. We are dealing with working and stock solution. 
And here, the trigger for you must be working, stock, C1, V1 equals C2, V2. That's the trigger for you. So we can say C1, V1 equals C2, V2. <coughs> we say that is our working solution and that is our stock solution. So our C2 is 5 millimolar and our V2 is 20 milliliter. And for our stock solution, this is 125 millimolar. The volume we don't know. That is what we want to know. Yeah? So we basically have 125 millimolar times question mark is the same as 5 millimolar times 20 milliliter. And all we need to do is really solve for the question mark. <coughs> question mark equals 5 millimolar times 20 milliliter divided by 125 millimolar. You see the millimolar cancels out. <coughs> and all that's left is 5 times 20 milliliter. I think that's 100 milliliter divided by 125. And again, that is something for the mathematical infantry. Uh, don't have a calculator. Does it make sense? Yeah? So we had 125 millimolar, and we wanted 20 milliliter of a 5 millimolar solution. I have a slightly different way of memorizing it. Because with the C1, V1, and C2, V2, I sometimes get it mixed up. <coughs> so in my simplistic mind, when I see working and stock solution, I immediately see a pharmacy. That's sort of in my brain, I see a pharmacy. <coughs> What do I see? I see a guy coming in with a prescription. On this prescription, the doctor says, give that person 20 milliliter of a 5 millimolar medicine. That's the prescription. So here's the desk. Here's the counter. And on the other side, There's this hot pharmacist. <laughs> and she says, I'm so sorry. I can't give you that prescription because we only have our stock. And you already have your equation. 
you have 20 milliliter times 5 millimolar divided by 125 <coughs> millimolar. The doctor says doctor times doctor. That's what the doctor says. And that is <coughs> what the hot pharmacist says. If you can imagine a hot pharmacist, if you can imagine a pharmacy, if you can't, it's C1, V1 equals C2, V2. Your choice. Speaking of hot, did you actually know? Well, no. There was a, there was a study in Switzerland, I think 10, 15 years ago, and they discovered that students who get lost in a seminar or lecture, 80% of these students actually have sexual fantasies. So if you don't get anything out of a lecture and if you get lost, at least I hope you have a good time. <laughs> I was told very clearly 